everyone. I hope you are doing well. As many of you know, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, the presumptive nominees for the Democratic and Republican presidential tickets, have agreed to debate. The first debate will occur today, and the second will occur on September 10th. With the war in Ukraine and the Israel-Hamas war ongoing, the significance of these debates shouldn't be understated, and yet many Americans feel understandably frustrated with the current rematch, and because of that, it can be hard to see the point in these debates. That said, it is important to note the significance of these debates as a matter of determining the state of the 2024 election and how that will impact the well-being of our government for the next four years. Regarding the debate, neither of these candidates has been particularly impressive rhetorically, least of all Trump, with his complete unwillingness to tell the truth. While Biden has been criticized in the past for his speech, it is important to remember just how unhinged Trump was in the 2020 debate he had against Biden. During that debate, Trump repeatedly interrupted Biden, prompting him to respond with a now infamous line. You're in voting now. Vote and let your senators know how you strongly you feel. Court? Let Vote now. Are you pack the Make court? sure you, in fact, let people know he doesn't you're want to a senator. The question. I'm not going to answer the question Why because, you answer that because question? the you question want to put is a lot of the new question Supreme is Court justice, the radical question, left. Will you shut who is up, on, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This Who's is on your so list? right. Gentlemen, is, I think this we've is ended so this. He's going to pack the court. If Trump isn't careful, he could undermine himself and demonstrate his more petulant attitude. Such an attitude would almost certainly negatively impact his polling and his favorability with the public. While these problems may reveal themselves again for Trump, the political environment is different now. Whereas Trump was defending himself and his position through COVID-19, most Americans are putting COVID-19 behind them, and most are vaccinated. Still, Trump is showing some strength, though it may be overstated. Recent polling shows that Trump's average national lead is under 1%, according to 538. It is also worth noting that other polling averages, namely Larry Sabato's Crystal Ball, a nonpartisan polling newsletter, show Biden leading in Michigan. By contrast, states such as Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, and Wisconsin remain toss-ups, according to this same source. Conversely, 538 polling averages show Biden leading slightly in Wisconsin and Michigan, with Trump leading Biden by 0.8% in Pennsylvania. Simply put, the election's outcome is far from certain, but how both candidates perform in this debate could significantly change it. It's also worth noting that neither candidate has a strong favorability advantage. Both candidates are seen unfavorably, with Biden being slightly less favorable. However, it is worth noting that this may be subject to change due to one simple factor, Trump's conviction. They count 30 guilty felony charge falsifying business records. Count 31 guilty falsifying business records in the first degree. Count 32 guilty falsifying business records in the first degree. Only two counts left. Count 33 former President Donald Trump found guilty falsifying business records. Count 34 guilty. Donald Trump found guilty on all 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree. All 34 are felonies. They, Donald Trump has now been convicted of 34 different felony crimes by a jury of his peers in Manhattan. On May 30th, Donald Trump was convicted on all 34 counts of falsifying business records. This stain on his record could seriously harm Trump, and Biden is sure to use it against him. If Biden were to attack Trump for his criminal behavior, it could work to undermine Trump's position and small polling lead. However, it is not guaranteed. A New York Times Siena poll found that 68% of the registered voters that they polled said that the conviction made no difference in who they would vote for in November. Among Republicans, the conviction hasn't dampered much in Trump's support, with 90% of GOP voters viewing Trump favorably. However, where there is change is where it can really hurt Trump. Twice as many independents said a conviction would lead them to oppose Trump than those who said they would support him because of it. Furthermore, a majority of independents believe that Trump received a fair trial. It's also worth noting that this poll shows Trump leading Biden by three points, though the New York Times notes that this poll could reflect a bias towards the GOP due to conservatives being more likely to answer the phones and answer the survey than their Democratic counterparts, so the data may be underestimating the danger to Trump and overstating his support. Nonetheless, Trump may face some backlash due to his conviction, but Biden will have to defend his record rather than simply relying on the issue of Trump's corruption. To do that, he needs to be able to speak without interruption, and thanks to new rules set by CNN, he may get that chance. As mentioned before, Trump interrupted Biden during their first debate in 2020. However, that is less likely with the new rules set out by CNN. 
Both candidates will be permitted to speak unencumbered. While one candidate speaks, the other's microphone is muted, which would prevent a repeat of the said 2020 debate. Also, candidates won't be allowed any props or pre-written notes to accompany them on stage. So all of this is to say it will likely be a much more controlled debate and we may actually see a full-fledged conversation rather than a petty slugfest. If that is the case, and I hope it will be, Biden will have to demonstrate his competence as a statesman and remind voters what it was like to deal with a Trump presidency in the first place. Of course, we'll have to wait and see how this pans out. Trump could very well just force Biden on the back foot, even though his record is actually pretty easily defendable. Or we could just see a repeat of the frustrating debate that we saw in 2020. Currently, Biden has a good chance to beat Trump, but it is far from what is acceptable for an incumbent president. My hope is that Biden will be able to hold his own against Trump as he did previously, and in a much more informative fashion. If Biden manages to hold his ground and push back on Trump, we can reasonably expect Trump to suffer some sliding in his momentum. One can only hope that that is the outcome, but again, we'll have to wait and see.